you know where you're from? Where's your parents from? Um, England. Right. I'm a bit quite basic. <laughs> British or... Because British and English are different things, aren't they? English yeah. is actually through heritage. Uh, British is being born there. Yeah. So our family, yeah. typical British, very uh, religious, set for me. It all ended up with our family, not my like my mum and dad, not religious whatsoever. Really? But our Skip relatives, yeah. very religious. Yeah. Um, and in fact, um, going back. Uh, 150 years. Yeah. They one of them, uh, the Jacksons. Yeah. Started the um, uh, Salvation Army. Oh really? With uh, Sir William Booth. Oh. And um, yeah, so my my dad's dad's mum and dad were like captains in the Salvation Army. Oh, well, two middle-aged chances doing their best. I think my <laughs> old man and his brother, they were in the army in the kind of fifth after world war two in burma and then yeah i think my my old man came out <coughs> he went to canada to work for a bit and my his brother was the one who went to rada so come out of the army went Sorry. to rada learned acting yeah. And he became the actor. Right. <clears throat> That's what you took off then. <laughs> exactly. So I've got to, I've got to be an actor. As we were saying yesterday, everyone's got to be an actor. Yeah. Well, definitely. Kind of, well, I've been, and yeah, I've been, I've suffered from that. For not really years, but everything's been word of mouth. So I've been quite fortunate, you know. And you've done. Good yeah, jobs it's weird you that you were introverted when you was at school, <clears throat> shy or you know, quieter, then you become a model <clears throat> and a fucking cage fighting warrior. Yeah. That's weird, <clears throat> isn't it? Yeah. Never ever went into a fight not thinking I'm going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a overall feeling like being scared that you're going to lose. You know, yeah. thinking this is, you know, I'm, oh, what am I doing here? Is that your with, psychopathic with... tendencies coming through? <laughs> well, well, it's, it's really good. It's switching off. It's always, it's always about switching off, isn't it? And just because you, when you switch off and become present, I suppose I didn't really meditate so much back then. I, I learned to mm. after a while, and it's really, you know, obviously that's helped, that helps massively. But just being present, because all you're worried about is scenarios. It's like everything in life, isn't it? You know, when businesses go wrong, you just, it's, 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 it's the thought of what might happen. It's the thoughts. Oh, as soon as I get out life. <laughs> and I'm in the car heading to work, yeah. my mindset is switched to. Right, let's just crack on. Yeah. I because did. at the end of the day, nothing is that but difficult and life-threatening. Yeah. You know, yes, people are going to be disappointed and there's going to be, some people are going to be upset or there's going to be stress. Things aren't going to go to plan. Things may cost money. Uh, that's life, isn't it? Yeah, but we, that's the thing with the days that we forget about ourselves as well. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just you know, underneath somewhere deep, it's some sort of self-esteem thing. Because you know, the reality is we always get it resolved. You know, it's like max has got tattooed on his arm, you know, it's, it's, it'll be all right it's like in it's the like end. a disability, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be all right in the end. If it isn't all right, it isn't the end. I wish a disability, Max. <laughs> um, which one? <laughs> How many tattoos you got? Um... One, Seven. Seven. And um, I got it done in, um, got it done in, yeah, Portsmouth. And that evening, I thought I was really cool. So <laughs> I, we went out at night out in Brighton, and I had a short sleeve denim shirt on, cut off, especially <laughs> so I can show my, my arm. Yeah. <laughs> and so then cool. um, yeah. the bouncers wouldn't let me in the club. This is this is this is in Brighton as well. Wow. You would wow. never think Brighton would be like that. No, yeah. really. You know, <laughs> no, the mo most want. kind of cosmopolitan, outrageous place to be go out in the evening. Yeah. yeah. And they wouldn't let me out into this club. <clears> so I think we had to go outside and someone had to lend me their shirt to get in there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got um, my one specially so that, like, I wouldn't ever get um, neck and... No uh, way. Face one to hands one, so it's basically like 
now if I'm wearing a shirt and a nice jumper, um, just for like certain business etiquette, I guess. Cut out whole sections of the um, ground floor, so sort of introduce the lower ground floor, but the stairs back in down there, sort of rearrange yeah. the whole house. But with those tall, slim houses, it's really nice to be able to integrate the floors. Max has lived in a few that we've done ourselves. Mm. Um, and it, it just gets you to live in the whole house. I mean, so many people now buy houses and they buy a house at like 5,000 square foot, but they live in about, seriously, yeah. about 1,000 and a half to 2,000 square foot. That's yeah. what they'll live in. So it's to try and get them to introduce into the possibilities yeah. and, and get, get, build the flow around the house that they have to go in these areas and they want to go in the areas. It's all about drawing everyone through, you know, through every area of the house on a daily basis. So, you know, that, that's the kind of philosophy behind it. House. Um, and then you did the lovely hotel in um, Ibiza? Yep. So what, what was that before you did the refurb? Was it like an unmodernised hotel? <coughs> Fundamentally, <coughs> yeah. It was, um, <coughs> I mean, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly an, an, an iconic building. Um, it's one of the few um, sort of like Art Deco buildings yeah, it was, yeah. uh, left in um, Ibiza. I mean, you know, there's a handful. Um, and that obviously Jason Bull <coughs> um, and the guys, they bought it and they bought it um, when they were just still yeah, sort of like young party goers, really. Yeah. And they just they started this hotel and it became the party hotel in Ibiza. Really? Yeah, it was just like, you know, sort of, it's very, very, very decadent. Now, by the time I came along, um, everyone had got a bit older. <laughs> and, you know, while, while um, they still wanted to go and have fun, they wanted to have fun in a more kind of a appropriate manner. You know, well, we've got a bit more money, I'm going to do quite well, sort of coming back year after year. And it wasn't just like going to be the kind of, um, you know, sort of like early 20s madness. They were sort of into their 30s now mm. and they're starting, you know, not sort of family to stay with something, but just, 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 just sort of evolving in life. Mm. So the idea was to like, be part of the evolution of it. Mm. And we started with the deco bar, um, which turned out, you know, was, was very successful, won an award. And then we just went for the rest of the hotel. It was a kind of five year experience. Um, and I was already sort of, because I used to go back in the off season. Um, I used to get the chance to um, watch Jason at work teaching all his um, staff, which is really fascinating. It's, it's served me well now because obviously I, I run a hotel up in Hastings now, um, and just getting an understanding of how you, you know, how, how you can really, really sort of understand your clients. Because I always I do that from a design perspective, but he does it from a sort of like a lifestyle and service perspective. You know, Does so, he still run hotels now? Yeah, yeah. No, Jason's got three, I think. Um, what in Ibiza, all yeah, over the place? Yeah, in Ibiza, we were, we were embarking on other things together. He's supposed to be involved in Vive, but he's, he's, he's quite tied up at the moment in um, in stuff he's doing in Ibiza. <clears throat> what was his background? Jason was a roofer. Jason was a <laughs> roofer. Yeah. It was also extreme. So he made some money, then he got into. No, like, really, he just actually went to a booth. He just had to go together on holiday, and they managed to, yeah, managed to make enough money. What in the, in the eighties, kind of when it all kicked off? Yeah, yeah, they bought it cheap. Um, it wasn't, you know, and turned, completely turned it around, turned it into very successful, um, and just, just, yeah, finally got to a point where it earned enough money in equity to refurbish the whole hotel. And then obviously we. Um, we sort of like took it over. Yeah. Took it over, um, and just they close in the off season, and it's um, it's very Ibiza style exactly. basically. Every, every time they they close to so the close of season, we're supposed to start there, like first of September, and we'd never get started till January. And then we had this mad rush of three months before it mm. opened again at the end of March. Um, but it was. Was um, it always his plan to do it up and sell it? No. No, it was just do it up and operate it, and then they got to a certain point, and some of the guys wanted to sell. There was um, there was an awful lot of interest. So there was a bidding war on it in the end. I mean, it, we, obviously we won best Spanish bar, best Spanish hotel, best European bar, and best European hotel. Yeah. Two of them actually international property awards and international design and architecture awards. So we, you know it done exceptionally well. Um, first hotel really I was quite pleased yeah <laughs> so that that got sold that got sold that got sold to Messi he was the best bid he was Messi's family because um, 
of a time. Was he actually involved in the purchase or not? Just his company? Is this, is, well, his family's very involved in the Did business. he actually come it's, to it's see the hotel? Um, I don't know if he's been there. I actually yeah. don't know if he's been there now.